limits. The human being has always been evolving to the point of thinking that there will be no limit. We will always become more intelligent, more skillful, and stronger. But what stops us is what we don't know yet. NASA has been notified of something that can leave more than one of us baffled. But what is it? And what does it have to do with our limits? Join us to find out one of the most important theories about our universe. This is Into Space. The Voyager spacecraft are a pair of interplanetary probes launched by NASA to explore the outer solar system. They were built by JPL and flew past Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The spacecraft are each equipped with three radioisotope thermoelectric generators for generating power from plutonium-238. One for generating electricity, and two for heating their craft's deep space instruments. The cold dart EG is used only when close enough to the sun that solar power is insufficient. The probes also carry two redundant radio transponders, one primary and one backup, a command beacon system which broadcasts telemetry data back to Earth via the Deep Space Network DSN, an attitude control subsystem containing 12 thrusters that provide velocity corrections, along with additional propellant which can be used if needed. Attitude control is achieved through the use of gyroscopes which measure changes in angular momentum due to moment-by-moment -moment changes in its center of mass position, plus accelerometers measuring velocity change over time, plus for sun sensors on each probe that provides information on its orientation relative to local noon at planet being orbited while other sensors measuring temperature, humidity, pressure conditions within then as well as outside environments during travel from one world to another during their mission lifetime thus far. Both Voyager 1 and 2 are capable of detecting Jupiter-like planets. They can also determine whether a planet has an oxygen-rich atmosphere, which could be a sign that life is present on it. Although both spacecraft were launched toward Jupiter and Saturn, it was decided to send Voyager 2 first to Uranus and Neptune instead. This would allow scientists to study the moons orbiting these planets before going out into interstellar space with Voyager 1, which was launched first on August 25, 2012. Voyager 1 became the first spacecraft to enter interstellar space traveling further than anyone or anything in history. The craft has been flying for over 40 years and is now around 13 billion miles from Earth. It took nearly 30 years for Voyager 1 to reach Jupiter and Saturn. In that time, it traveled over 6 billion miles, 10 billion km. The acceleration toward interstellar space is much slower than what humans experience on Earth's surface because there's no gravity helping push it along. But at 17 kilometers per second, 38,000 miles per hour, it will still take about 300 years before we know if there's enough matter out there for the spacecraft to actually bump into something else. The probe's objectives included flybys of Jupiter, Saturn, and Saturn's large moon Titan. Both probes were launched in 1977 on Titan IIIS rockets. Voyager 1 flew past Jupiter in 1979 and Saturn in 1981. In November 1980, Voyager 2 flew past Jupiter and then continued to Uranus 1986 and Neptune 1989. Voyager 1 had been traveling away from the Sun at over 38,000 kilometers per hour since its launch by the Space Shuttle Discovery's STS-51L mission in 1986, but received a boost from Earth as it passed us this week. The spacecraft's current speed is about 17 kilometers per second or 51 times faster than an average person walks. 
Voyager 2 was the first space probe to study the atmospheres of Uranus and Neptune. It was launched on August 20, 1977, seven days after its twin Voyager 1. The spacecraft flew past Jupiter and Saturn, becoming the first probe to visit those planets. In 1989, it flew past both Uranus and Neptune. It was the first probe to study their atmospheres in detail. Voyager 2 studied two moons of Neptune, Triton, which is similar in size to Pluto, and Nereid, which has a diameter of about 300 miles. It also observed several moons around Uranus that were previously unknown, Cordelia, Ophelia, and Belinda, and discovered Ariel's rings, the outermost ring is named Shakespeare. In September 1977, both Voyagers were launched on Titan IIIE Sendar rockets. The launch date for Voyager 1 was August 20, 1977, and for Voyager 2, it was August 20, 1977. The launch site for Voyager 1 was Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida, and the launch site for Voyager 2 was Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. Each spacecraft weighed 1,032 kilograms, 2,170 pounds when fully fueled with hydrazine propellant for its thrusters, power supply, and other systems needed to operate during flight. Primary objectives of these missions were to explore Jupiter, Saturn, their moons and rings up close, to study interplanetary space between Jupiter and Saturn with scientific instruments. The Voyager spacecraft can detect magnetic fields as small as 4 nanotesla 0.0000000004 gauss, which is a very small magnetic field. Earth's magnetic field, on the other hand, has a strength of about 50,000 nanoteslas 50 microgauss. The spacecraft opened our eyes with clear evidence of one of the most popular theories by enthusiasts and professionals in the field. The Heliopause. The Heliopause is the boundary where the solar wind, a stream of charged particles emitted by the sun, meets the interstellar medium, the matter and radiation that exists in the space between stars. It marks the outermost extent of the solar system's influence and is considered the boundary between our solar system and the rest of the galaxy. The heliopause is thought to be located around 100 astronomical units O from the sun, or about 100 times the distance from the Earth to the sun. However, its exact location is not known as measurements have not been able to determine its precise location. One of the NASA mission named Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 was sent in 1977, is on a course to cross the heliopause to study the interstellar medium. Voyager 1 crossed the heliopause in 2012 and is still transmitting data back to Earth today. Voyager 2 is also expected to cross the heliopause in the coming years, allowing scientists to make even more detailed measurements of this distant boundary. Scientists also believe that there is also a magnet opos, which is the boundary between the solar wind and the interstellar medium, where the solar wind's magnetic field is abruptly terminated. The location of this boundary is thought to be closely tied to the location of the heliopause, and understanding the relationship between the two is an important area of research. The consensus is now that the spacecraft has left the solar system and entered interstellar space. The exact date of the crossing is still under investigation but we can be confident that it happened on or before August 25th, 2012. The heliopause is a fascinating topic 
and it has been much discussed in recent years. As we move into the future, we will continue to learn more about this area of space. I believe that before long we will see evidence of alien life forms that inhabit this area or even beyond it. You like the video? Give us a thumbs up and let us know what you thought about this amazing theory in the comment box. This was Into Space. See you in the next video.